Welcome to Austria. Just have to forgive me while I'm trying to put my glasses on under my fresh new gumball hat. So, if you tuned in last time, we were with the V8 Bentley Bentayga in Kitzbühel, Austria, which is about, I don't know, 45 minute drive down the road here. Up until now, it's kind of been a bit overcast and a little bit dull, but today we have this beautiful crystal clear sky so we can actually see where we're skiing and that's the point of the day. However, walk with me. Um, we've been given a new Bentley. We have the keys here to the W12. What's really cool about this experience is that my drive in the V8 Bentayga the other day uh, was my first Bentley Bentayga experience. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, but Bentley are very kindly giving me the keys to the W12 version, which was the car that they initially launched. Just quickly, look at that. That is the view from our hotel. Yeah, let's go and check out our Bentayga. I'm gonna run you through the options list because uh, despite the fact that on paper, the base price of these cars looks almost acceptable. Uh, I find it uh, baffling how many optional extras are on this car. So let's go and check that out. Uh, check out what it's like to kind of live with really. This is a sort of crash course in living with a Bentayga because we managed to pack in our skis and snowboards and things like that. And then we're gonna drive down the road to a skiing area or skiing district called Salbach. And then uh, yeah, make the most of this fresh powder, blue skies, etc. All right, this is our car. This is our W12 Bentayga. Uh, the colour, to be honest, is not to my taste, um, but it's called Bentega Bronze. And as you'll see shortly, the spec on it is glorious. Uh, we've conveniently been given the option of the sort of ski chute in between these two seats. Uh, this actually has the luxury pack on it where each passenger has basically their own seat. It's not the sort of conventional bench that you often get on SUVs. Well, let's hop in and <laughs> I'll run you through the options list on this car because it is unbelievable. First of all, let me just lay your eyes on it because it is an incredible interior. It's a place to sit, it is beautiful. Um, one of the cool things about getting press cars is uh, they give you, or at least Bentley do anyway, they give you this laminated spec sheet of exactly the sort of breakdown of the spec of this car. Um, now, as an idea, Base price of this car is 175,200 euros. Don't get me wrong, that's a lot of money. Uh, but the, the total option cost on this one is 64,000 euros, taking the car to 239,210 euros. Just there. Um, and you might be thinking, how on earth is it possible to uh, put that many options on? Well, this here is the options list. If we pick out some of the larger numbers we've got 5600 euros here for bentley rear entertainment with maps that's basically two screens in the back so passengers can be entertained um 6685 euros for name for bentley name it's these speakers here so name is a super high-end uh british manufacturer and designer of sound systems they've teamed up with bentley to make a fantastic sound system and i have to say i checked it out on the drive over here and it is awesome but nonetheless uh 6685 euros uh, and then there's all sorts of bits and bobs in there so yeah entry level price not terrible 175,000 euros uh spec it up you can go absolutely crazy on the v8 that i drove um two days ago the optional extras were 80,000 pounds i don't even know how that's a thing i mean you could buy an entirely new car for the options on that so um, yeah, let's jump in, see how this thing compares to drive to the V8 and then saturate ourselves in this incredible environment before unfortunately I have to go home tomorrow. Let's hit it. Oh, 
Right, now I would normally say this is the first turn of the wheel in whatever new car I find myself filming in. But as it happens, I've been driving this car pretty much all of yesterday, and obviously the drive over from Kitzbühel. I just wanted to really do a very brief comparison of the two cars. This video really isn't about comparing them, uh, because essentially they are an identical car, just one has a V8 in it and one has the W12. What's interesting for me is I've kind of approached this from the reverse aspect of the rest of the automotive world, who definitely drove the W12 before the V8. Now, when I drove the V8, the interesting thing is, I couldn't have imagined it with anything else in it because that engine suited the car so much. Uh, one thing I would say, which is kind of surprising, is that the V8 actually sounds better. Well, I guess. The approach that um, Bentley have taken with these two cars is the W12 is more of the luxurious Grand Tour approach to it. Uh, stunning amounts of uh, torque and effortless just pulling power in this car and it's very quiet. When you're cruising at these speeds, you're basically floating along. It's a beautiful experience. But when you open it up, it doesn't quite have that lovely characteristic barble that you seem to have got from the V8 and I think that's the biggest difference and where Bentley are positioning these two cars. This is a little bit more luxury refined and dare I say it, the V8 is a little bit more sporty. Um, I guess as a really quick summary, I loved the V8. It was, it was such a great car. Now weight difference, they're actually very similar. In fact, the only difference in weight between the V8 and the W12 is in the actual engines themselves, and it's only 25 kilogram weight saving. Obviously, weight distribution is a little bit different, but when you get on these two things, when you accelerate in them and put them both into sport mode, they both feel as agile as each other. And I think, for me, if you watch this channel regularly, you know that I do enjoy a little bit of theater from my car experience. And the V8 for me does exactly that. It gives you just a little bit more theater. Also, the base price is there's 30,000 pounds difference. Now, I know that sounds a lot, but by the time you put on the extras, as you've seen, I mean, literally the sky is the limit. Interesting fact, and this goes to show really how much emphasis Bentley are putting on extras. The watch partner of Bentley is Breitling, and they offer a Torbilon watch to go in the dash where the existing sort of standard Breitling clock sits that is actually more expensive than the car itself. So you can literally feature one optional extra, which is the Breitling Torbilon clock in the dash, which is more than the entry level price of the car itself. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of just how crazy the optional extras are on this car. Anyway, more importantly is the overall package and the fact that as luxurious and beautiful as this car is, we can stick in a snowboard, a pair of skis, boots, and all of our gear for the day, crunch through this pretty grimy road conditions, work our way up a snowy mountainside, and then go skiing all day. And that's exactly what I'm planning on doing right now. Okay, seamless transition, we've arrived. This is my first time skiing in Austria, which is cool, uh, but it's the middle of the day. We've been busy the first half of the day uh, dealing with upcoming plans around the Geneva Motor Show, more on that later. Uh, so we're actually waiting. We've, got to, we've been told to wait four minutes and then we will uh, qualify to get a half day lift pass, which in effect is half the price. So for four minutes, I don't mind waiting to pay half the price. And then we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go up this massive lift, which looks like it takes us to a pretty high point on the mountain, which is a good starting point. I haven't been skiing for three years since I started YouTube. Uh, every time there was a group of friends joining the ski season, uh, I got invited out to track days in the desert. In Dubai and Bahrain is their sort of track day season now, despite the fact it's winter here. And technically they're winter there. Uh, it's still track day season, so I hope I don't fall over too much.
Well, this is working out to be pretty awesome. One of the things that I could definitely get used to and the benefit of having a car at the ski resort is being able to drive to different places. So we've nipped over to a place uh, where some friends of ours are skiing. And that's super nice to be able to just catch up with friends. Normally I'm used to going skiing and just having to like park and use the same area to go skiing in. Uh, but when you have a car, you can nip along to different valleys. Austria, by the way, if you've never been here, the skiing is out of this world. I'm used to mostly skiing in the French Alps and Swiss Alps, um, which is fantastic and there's a huge amount of skiing area. But I'm finding that it is so picturesque here, there's loads of foliage. The skiing is vast. Look at it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, people are lovely, food is fantastic. It's all awesome. So, unfortunately I've only got one, one day here. We're approaching the end of the day. I think I've only got an hour left. So I'm gonna make the most of the skiing and then head back to the Bentayga. Okay, back down the mountain, had a shower, had a change, feeling fresh. This is my last day here. It's airport tomorrow. What can I say? Weather's closing in, so I don't mind too much. So I'm gonna take the rest of this time to look around the local town and see what's what. I'll spend a lot more miles in this Bentayga. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao. Thank you.